everybody. Welcome back to World Drum Club. I'm Kalani. In this lesson, I'll be showing you my approach to playing quality sounds on a frame drum. This is a Bendir by Cooperman Drum Company. It's got a snare on the inside. So you will hear a little buzzing sound that is supposed to be there. Um, although in this drum, you can actually remove the snares by just pulling them away from the head. So that's really nice. Uh, all right, so let's look at the mistakes that people often make when they're learning how to play a couple of the basic sounds on the frame drum. And in this lesson, I'm just gonna focus mainly on the doom sound. There's different ways people spell that, but the most common is D-O-M. The doom is made, uh, well, one of the ways it's made is by playing with the ring finger on the head and letting it you know, bounce off the head. So it sounds like this. And I just have to pause for a second here to say that I think these Cooperman frame drums are amazing. So make sure you go check out Cooperman Drum Company uh, and I'll leave a link to their website below this video. But if you're looking for a nice drum, start there uh, and finish there. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm not, you know, making a commercial for them, but I, I do really appreciate their, their craftsmanship and quality. So here's a mistake that a lot of people make, and usually the way we show this technique, and this again is one of the ways you can play this, it's not the only way. Um, there's certainly some teachers out there that have more experience with the frame drum than I do, but I'm gonna show you a basic way that you guys can start. We usually have people hold the drum down here, we call it the six o'clock position, right at the bottom. And this, this finger, right now for our purposes, we're not gonna activate our holding hand just going to focus on the playing hand. So then we then we say, uh, then put your finger at, in your case, if you're looking at the drum from behind and you're playing right-handed, it would be the three o'clock position. For me, because I'm playing this left-handed, it would be the nine o'clock position. So just note that if you're looking at the drum from your perspective, then your, other, your right hand would be at the three o'clock position. Thumb on the side, and this creates a pivot point. So we, we place our thumb, and then we move, like we're turning a door handle, uh, this way. And one of the mistakes I, pee -pee, I see people make is that they flatten out their thumb. It becomes flat like that. That's not the. T this is not really what you want. You want it a little bit, with a little bit of space, a little bit away. This allows you to move with a little more grace, freedom, and power. So keep keep your hand a little bit away from the drum. Don't let it collapse down onto the drum shell. And then the other thing, and this is the other major mistake or major error that I see people doing when they're first learning, is they go like this, which is, which is all finger muscle, right? It's all, they're trying to move their finger. You use your finger to strike the drum. You don't move your finger so much to strike the drum. You move your arm and your hand, your palm. So this is more like one thing, all of this. And that's where you get power. So you don't have to use, can you imagine if you're playing for an hour or even 30 minutes or even five minutes and you're just trying to strike the drum with your poor little finger muscle? <laughs> that's not the way we do it. It, it, it's, it might seem that way when you're first learning, but you wanna relax and just kind of throw your finger down there with this twisting motion. So then you can relax your fingers and just with a little turn, little flick. But again, it's not, it's coming from the arm. It's not com even coming from the wrist. So that could be another mistake if you think it's just wrist. It's just, you know, it's deep down there from your elbow all the way out to your fingertips. And then lastly, throwing that finger into the head, like you're gonna go through it, letting the head kind of throw it back out so you don't get stuck on the head. It's not that, of course. You would get a lot of immediate feedback from the drum that says, no, you're staying on me too long. You need to bounce. Otherwise, I'm not gonna make a sound for you, right? That's another kind of stroke. If you do that on purpose, that's fine. But if you're trying to do doom, and you want to make sure you bounce off. 
Um, also, the finger is hitting along the length of the finger. It's not just on the, the fingertip. So that could be another error that people might think it's like poking the, the head with the tip of their finger. But it's really just very relaxed along the length of your finger. Okay, then when you're ready to practice that and you've focused on creating that doom sound, then you can go on and put it into context uh, in a rhythm. So in a second, I'll show you how to do that. Before we get there, I do want to pause to acknowledge uh, and thank the World Drum Club patrons who have gone to patreon.com and signed up. Uh, this is a member supported channel. So if you enjoy these lessons, please go and sign up to become a patron for a buck, uh, a video, or whatever you want to donate, um, just like leaving a tip. Okay, so let's look at how you would place this in context. Uh, let's have a rhythm like 105 beats a minute, just as a random tempo, nice walking tempo. And you could play your doom sounds. And then place some tuck high sounds in between. Maybe a couple tucks. Okay, and then if you do that, you're off to a great start. Let me know how you guys enjoy this lesson. If you have any questions, you can leave them below. Uh, Patreon members, drum club members, uh, we can interact a little bit more through our message system. But if you are on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up if you like it. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in a future lesson.